Hello, David Brewster here again. Welcome back. This is Lesson 3, Building Speed. And uh, this has been a really common request I've had from students over the years. And that request is usually phrased, you know, how do I get faster? Or how do I shred? Or, uh, you know, I saw Steve Vai on this DVD. How do I play like that? Or I saw Buckethead on YouTube. You know, is there some quick way you can show me how to play that way? Um, honestly, no. You know, there really isn't a shortcut or a magic potion that you can drink and you'll just suddenly, you know, play like Steve Vai overnight. Um, the only way to really reach that level of ability and performance is just through good old-fashioned hard work and patient, persistent practice. And that last part's actually uh, really important to remember. You have to be patient here, um, you know, mainly because the results that you're looking for, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, the progress is going to be very gradual and slow but in time, you'll definitely see improvement. You know, whether it's just you feel more connected with the guitar, or things seem you know smoother or easier, and you'll definitely you know you'll you'll notice things getting faster in time. But uh, the other important thing there is being persistent. Um, you know, just working on your technique or practicing you know once or twice a year really isn't going to help you. You know. Um, and like in the perfect world, I'd just say, well, practice, you know, six to eight hours every day and you'll be Steve Vai in no time. But in reality, uh, you know, most people can't do that, you know, whether they're working or they're going to school or you've got 34 kids or you're a circus performer and, you know, you were attacked by a bear or whatever. You know, life gets in the way of practice time and spending time with your guitar. So... Uh, but you're in luck because, you know, you don't have to spend nine hours a day every day to improve your ability or to increase your knowledge. Um, you know, and the experts agree. And the experts being guys like Steve Morse or, you know, John Petrucci, Steve Vai, Paul Gilbert, Joe Satriani, and all those, you know, technicians of the instrument, um, they all agree that, you know, you can basically benefit and uh, gain a lot just by, you know, 20 or 30 or maybe 40 minute intense, focused, uninterrupted uh, practice sessions. You know, doing that is way more beneficial than just kind of sitting in your room and, and jamming for six hours, you know. And that brings in a, a really important uh, point here. You have to realize there's a big difference between practicing and playing. You know, practicing is when you're you're working on things that you don't fully understand or you, you don't fully have control of yet. You're working on new information, whether it's scales or uh, you know music theory or technique or whatever. It's something new. It's something that you know you're having to work on. Um, playing is uh, when you're jamming. You know you're playing things you're already comfortable with. You know songs you've already learned, scales and licks and and exercises that you're already comfortable with. And um, you do need to find like a balance between the two because. Uh, you definitely need to spend time practicing, but then you also need to have you know time playing. Um, so think of practice as work, which uh, unfortunately uh, you know it, it is work. You know you have to sweat and spend time and sit there and really uh, hone in on what you're doing. But then also you know allow yourself time to just play and have fun. You know uh, jam with some friends on some old AC/DC songs, or you know just noodle around and, and, and experiment with the guitar. And uh, I like to have a, a balance for myself, you know, I allow myself play time and then I have practice time where I'm working on, you know, new ideas or new concepts. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on building speed using information that we've already covered in the first two lessons. So we're kind of building upon where we already started and where we've already been. Um, so hopefully by now you've had time to spend uh, practicing the A natural minor scale and then also moving that position or that scale shape that I showed you around the fretboard. So hopefully you've had time to try it in different locations and in different keys. And then also in the last lesson, which was octave linking, hopefully you've had time to kind of you know practice getting around the fretboard in a different way. Um, so this lesson is going to basically just gonna it's just gonna be little one octave chunks of the A natural minor scale and uh, you know instead of instead of giving you like three octave scales and we're doing stuff like this we're just gonna focus on a small little area and really hone in on what you're doing there 
and then you can expand that idea you know around the neck you can you can make it three octaves if you want but for now we're just gonna we're just gonna basically focus on a small little block of, of notes on the fretboard and you're gonna sit there and just work it over and over and over and practice it basically and then once you're comfortable with it you can sit around and play this stuff all the time so uh, anyway without further ado here we go so let's let's get busy you know basically I chose to use triplets here so a triplet is really just a grouping of three notes a rhythmic grouping of three notes and uh, you know as far as counting it you can basically just count one two three one two three or triplet triplet and um, I guess to start off here, just grab the 5th fret low E, which is the note A, and I want you to hit that six times, um, or use two sets of triplets, like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, triplet, 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 triplet. So what I want you to do is you're going to play that note six times, and then you're going to basically play six more notes. You're going to play A, B, C, D, E, F, and when you put all that together, uh, slowly, you have an exercise that sounds like this. Now what I want you to do is take that idea and then just move it up to the next octave and start on the 7th fret on the D and do the exact same thing. Then move to the tenth fret on the B and do it again. Okay, now let's just make a basic variation of that and uh, we'll start the exact same way with that, that A note. But now instead of ascending through those uh, that series of notes, uh, after you do the uh, the two sets of triplets on the A, now I want you to start on F and then descend that same series. So instead of this, you're going to start here and go, and you've got this. And then move that around. basically split up what we just played. Um, so I want you to do three A's on the low E, and then descend F, E, D on the A, and then three A's on the low E, and descend C, B, A on the low E. Uh, so slowly, you would have this. <laughs> like we did a second ago. You can move it to different keys. Okay, now once you get comfortable doing that, uh, we can expand this idea. So let's go ahead and just grab that G and A note on the D string on the 5th and 7th fret, and let's incorporate those notes into an idea. Um, but let's let's stay with that, uh, that triplet on the 5th fret low E. Let's start with that and play a triplet there, and then I want you to reach up and grab the seventh fret on the D, and basically play this descending, ascending pattern, uh, A, G, A, or seven, five, seven. And then I want you to reach back down, play a triplet on that A note, and then I want you to play F, E, F, or eight, seven, eight on the A. Go back down, play another triplet on that A note, and then I want you to grab the seventh fret on the A, and play E, D, E, or 757 on the A. Go back to the low E, play a triplet, and then I want you to play C, B, C, or 878 on the low E. So we're just kind of injecting this triplet A uh, pattern in between each little three note uh, walk down. We're really just kind of cruising down that scale, but instead of doing this, we're just kind of slowly it's kind of making our way down there. And if you add those triplets in there, it sounds pretty cool. You can move it to another. 
another uh, position. You could use the octave linking. You could do it right here. Now, um, the rest of the fingering is going to be the same, except uh, where you grab that A and G note in the very beginning, it's going to feel a little funky. Because instead of doing this, if you move it here, you're going to do it like this. So that'd be the seventh fret on the D. And there's your A note triplet that we're going to be doing. And then you're, after you do that, you're going to reach up, grab the tenth fret on the B, and then you're going to play 10, 8, 10, or a, G, A, right there. Back to that triplet here. And then basically F, E, F, right here. 10, 9, 10 on the G. Back to that triplet. And then you're going to play E, D, E, or 9, 7, 9 on the G. Back to that triplet. And then you're going to play 10, 9, 10, or you know, C, B, C on the D string. So slowly in this position. Pretty cool sounding, um, pretty cool sounding exercise. You know, it's very musical. It's not. Uh, it doesn't sound like like space music or weird like Twilight sound chromatic stuff. You know, it doesn't sound weird. It sounds musical. You know? Alright, well I wish you luck with these uh, speed building exercises and with the variations that I uh, instructed you to create. So, uh, you know, definitely take the ideas that I'm, I'm sharing, but then move them around. You know, change keys, change positions, change the strings, change the fingering, um, and kind of make them your own. You know, and as you do that, um, you know, you'll find patterns and areas that are really comfortable and you know you can sit there and play it blindfolded and that's fine you know definitely uh, you know, work on things that, are, that, are, that come easy for you but at the same time as you make variations and you, and you experiment with this if along the way you find something that's really uncomfortable or unorthodox or a challenge focus on that you know that's kind of your uh, your green light there it's like well, hey if, if you're having trouble doing this there's a reason, you know, and then you can kind of work through that problem area. Next thing you know, you can do it, and then you've got a new challenge somewhere. Um, so, I don't know how to phrase this, but uh, don't spend a lot of time strengthening your strengths, you know, strengthen your weaknesses, because uh, if you can do something comfortably, you know, you want to keep that ability up, but, you know, you want to find those things that, you know, are physically challenging, you know, where it's like, wow, uh, this position shift is weird, or sliding with this finger into this note after I did this is odd, or, wow, I gotta tap this note and it's really hard to do, you know, um, whatever it is, uh, you'll find, you know, through practicing and, and improving your skill, um, as you challenge yourself and you, and you knock down those barriers, um, it'll make some things easier, but then again, you know, once you've unlocked uh, or overcome one challenge, then suddenly it seems like, it, you know, ten more challenges present themselves. Um, so it's almost like you're just opening doors, and, uh, you know, don't look at it like, you know, it's an impossible thing. I mean, music is a lifelong journey, so uh, you got the rest of your life to, uh, to work on this and, and learn and to enjoy uh, the guitar, or music in general. So, uh, anyway, good luck with this. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me know uh, how your progress is working from these lessons. And I will see you in lesson four, which is coming very soon. So, uh, rock on. And uh, I will, uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.